Hello and welcome to program 65 in this series of programs and tutorials that focus on Trace Station Easy Language. If you're not familiar with this uh, uh, our site, then please go to markplex.com, that's M A R K P L E X.com, and you'll find a lot of materials and resources there. Program 65 is basically a zigzag function. I've done some, some programs surrounding zigzags before, notably program 26 and program 36. 26, I looked for repeated change, in other words, uh, zigs and zags that were the same size. And uh, program 36, I looked at um, trying to pre predict the zigs and zags based on previous zigs and zags. What I wanted to do in this program was, first of all, put the zigzag into a function. So it could be called from whatever program you liked, uh, although it does draw. So it's probably something that you uh, mostly want to put into uh, an indicator or a, a show me study. I wanted to highlight Fibonacci relationships where the ratio of two uh, proximate uh, uh, zigzag lines formed a Fibonacci ratio, either a retracement or an extension or projection. And I wanted some way of referencing the values of those vertical moves and also the bar numbers of previous uh, zigzag pivots, as I'll call them. So that's what this program does. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is look at the calling program. So this is the, the show me that comes with the program. And uh, you'll see that uh, we have various inputs and namespaces at the top that must be included. Uh, we do some initialization of the vectors that we're going to be using. And then we, we call the function. And I've added uh, some text here to sort of explain what's going on. So here's the call. And uh, I think it's, it's fairly straightforward. But just to explain the inputs as we go along. And what I've done is just included some notes at the top of the screen. So for example, the uh, retrace percentage, this really determines how many zigzags there are. If that is a really small number, then we're going to get a lot more zigzags. If it's a bigger number, then we get fewer. Basically, it's just determining uh, what percentage is required for the, uh, the pivot to form a new zig or zag. And uh, what zigzags do, incidentally, is just filter out a lot of price move um, so that you can see the main moves of price without seeing the, the smaller moves. Tolerance, this is something that we're going to be using when we're comparing the ratios of the two uh, zigzags next to each other with Fibonacci ratios. And what we're saying is if the ratio that's calculated is within a certain percentage of a zigzag of a Fibonacci ratio, then we're going to uh, determine that that is a Fibonacci ratio. So zigzag up, zigzag color up, zigzag color down. These are the colors of the, the zigzag lines. Obviously, the up one is going to be for the up and the down for the down. Notice that these colors are in quotes, and that's because we're using the uh, object the trade station drawing objects and I've included at markplex.com at the uh, the website for this uh, the uh, web page for this particular program all the colors that you can choose there uh, color of text also using the same convention uh, line thickness this is uh, in the case where a uh, zigzag ratio close to a Fibonacci ratio is confirmed when that occurs what we're going to do is we're going to include information on the chart about the uh, which Fibonacci ratio is close to and we're also going to thicken the line so if we just go back to the chart you'll see in this particular case this was close to a Fibonacci ratio of 138.2 um, minus 38 that's the vertical move of this zigzag line whereas in this case there wasn't wasn't particularly close to a Fibonacci ratio, so we've just done a thin line. And uh, rather than saying Fib something, we've just left that blank. So we're just showing the vertical move there. So let's just go back to the chart. Now, I mentioned that we're passing various information uh, in four vectors. And um, the size of those vectors we can determine here. In this case, we've got 100 elements in the vector. And what this is saying is that for the last 100 moves, 
uh, we're going to be storing the information in the vector that can be accessed by the program and I'll just show you how to do that in a moment and then finally we've got um, the the font of the text associated with the uh, zigzag lines and also the font size so you can see in this case we've got uh, Arial and we've got it a certain size and we're plotting it on the chart here. So what I want to do now is just uh, explain how we can get information from those vectors and what I'm going to be doing is looking at the up vector and uh, then we can just compare it with the chart. So let's I think what I'm going to do is just make sure that we're applying this just to one chart at the moment. So I'm just going to go into my workspace and close the program down on some of the other charts. Okay, so I think we're good to go. Uh, I've just left this program applied to this one particular chart. So let's go into the calling, calling program. And what I wanna do is just print the last few vertical moves from the function just for the up moves. So we're gonna say if last bar on chart, then print and uh, probably gonna generate, um, we may generate an error here. So let me just see the up moves. So it's up moves. And what we're looking for is items like so. And I'm gonna put a reference. The first one, the most recent is zero. So I'm going to do is then put a little space and we're going to do the next one. So you'll see that the way we're accessing this information is we're using up moves, the name of the vector, dot items, and then we're putting zero for the most recent, one for the next most recent, and then two for the next most recent. I think we'll leave it at that for the moment. So I'm just going to see if this verifies. If not, so you'll see we get this error here. And uh, the reason for that is what we also need to do here is tell the program what sort of number we're expecting. And what we are expecting is a double because it's a vertical move. And that could be a double or will be a double. So let's try again. We need to go back to the chart, see if that's still applied. It is. Okay, so we look at view uh, print log and we'll just look at the last few uh, changes. Okay, so it's saying 43 and as you can see the last up moves 43. Let's just go back, see what the previous one was. 27, that uh, agrees there. And then the one before that, 22. So that works out well. Now, the thing that I didn't do that I think is good practice to do would be just to check that the vector contains a certain number of elements. And you do that with um, the dot count. So uh, the way I would uh, put that is up moves dot count has got to be greater or equal to. Now we're looking at three elements, zero, one, and two, so it'd have to, it would have to be greater than three. So I would normally do that and uh, should see that uh, the result on the chart is no different, 43, 27, 22. Okay, so that's, that was uh, quite uh, straightforward to do and we could go on uh, up to 99 the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, all the way up to 99. Now, one thing that uh, you need to be aware with this program is, well, first of all, that this can be used on tick and second charts and so on. Charts basically where several bars may share the same hour, minute reference, or even uh, hour, minute, second reference it will work because it's using bar number. But one of the potential issues with bar number is we need to just go into view, chart analysis preferences, and we just need to make sure that show empty daily and tra trading periods for a daily chart and show empty intraday uh, session periods for traditional chart types that they are not clicked. If they are clicked, what you'll see, 
and uh, I'm not sure that we're going to see it on this particular chart but if we go to for example a five minute chart you'll see that uh, we've got what seems very strange we've got these uh, positions clearly in the wrong place and that is because the uh, the chart by uh, in its normal run of things will include those uh, missing bars and that really confuses the uh, bar number bn point type functionality so what we need to do is go view chart analysis preferences and i would suggest that you just de-click those on any chart that you're using this program with now what i did as i was developing this program was i created a another function but the other function also included legacy drawing objects so i thought it would be worth including this in case you're interested in seeing how to use one or the other or how to to change between the two so what i'm going to do is just uh, quickly turn off the uh, program 65 and turn on the program 65 legacy and you can see that the lines are drawing on top of each other you can't really uh, see much going on there but what I wanted to show you is if we went to a situation where we were using uh, for example tick or something like that um, what we're going to find is that the the legacy drawing objects start having problems and you'll see that uh, for example the legacy drawing object is just in thin air there uh, whereas the uh, the new drawing object using the uh, the new drawing objects pins it down exactly and the reason for that is if you look at this the uh, the 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 hour and minute is 15 26 15 26 15 26 even though the the second is changing um, the uh, the legacy drawing objects are not able to work with that and what I want to do is just show you a little bit of the code so program 65 legacy just to give you an idea of the sort of um, so that's the show me study the, the the function just to give you some idea of the uh, the different ways that we do drawing so uh, in terms of legacy simply using tl new for the uh, for the lines uh, for the for the new drawing objects we're using we're creating uh, um, bn points and then we're doing we're creating the trend lines then we're adding the trend lines to the chart and um, similar for the uh, for the text objects okay so i hope you might find this program useful or uh, educational and uh, as i say i'm going to make the program uh, 65 function and calling show me study available and i'm also going to include as a bonus this uh, legacy program which just goes through and shows how you could create the program using both the legacy drawing tools and the newer ones uh, or if you wanted to change from using legacy to go to the new or vice versa then uh, i think it will be helpful for you and i've left a lot of my commented out print statements and uh, other things there uh, just because they might possibly be useful to you. Anyway, thank you for your attention.